Hey everybody, welcome in that uh, series of uh, video tutorials regarding closed simulation. This is the third uh, video of the series where we're going to speak about collision with the character bones. So uh, if you haven't done so, I really encourage you checking the previous video, especially the first one, uh, which goes through, um, you know, all the overall setup uh, where you want to really make sure that everything works properly. So um, in this uh, setup I'm having here, I created a, a, a woman character and what I want to do is animate the skirt. Obviously when the um, legs are going to move, we want to make sure that it's not going to collide through the clothes setup and that the clothes setup reacts accordingly to this. Uh, contrary to the previous video here, I'm in a, a meter sized character, so we're going to consider that one part of the grid here is one meter and my character is probably 1.7 uh, grid squared. So we really want to make sure, as we stated into the previous video, that here gr the gravity is set up 100 times less than the default value, uh, else we'll have a completely different uh, close setup and we really want to um, avoid this. So um, this is the setup with uh, regular gravity. So uh, this is my skirt and uh, if I put the default gravity which is provided this is what I get, so it's really not what I want here, so I really want to make sure that the gravity is set corresponding to this character. Um, by the way, just a quick addition to the previous video where we spoke about materials, uh, probably that um, skirt here is a good example of the bending and the shear resistance. So uh, you can see here it made a lot of um, shears here and there, it looks like a, uh, a student uh, skirt making a lot of shears. If we um, put the bending resistance to zero, we've got something which is more rigid. We've got few shears here and there. And if we put the shear resistance to zero there, we've got something which is pretty rigid here. Great. So let's go back to uh, maybe um, more regular values. Okay. And uh, let's say we're good with this. So as you can see, I've um, animated the leg of the character and also the transform of the character. And uh, obviously we can see it's completely going through uh, the clothes and uh, we really want to avoid this. So we're gonna define uh, some rigid bodies um, which are gonna be attached to some of, the, some of the character bones to fix those. So I'll go um, pretty quickly through the setup. I just want to give you an overall or impression of what you need to do, but uh, obviously we'll require a bit more time to set this up properly uh, if you've got uh, plenty of uh, clothes on your character and more bones. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm, I'm gonna hide uh, that skirt first and what I want to do is uh, as my skirt is uh, probably the eight of uh, the uh, upper part of my leg, I want to convert those parts here as uh, some rigid bodies which will be attached to those bones there and that bone here. Really want uh, really make sure that uh, you are into the bind pose uh, before doing anything if you want uh, you know physics uh, to go through accordingly. Uh, okay, well my bind pose view is not correct, but I set it up uh, properly before. And um, make sure that you don't have any scale anywhere. Uh, we kind of repeated this into the previous videos, but uh, really make sure that everything is proper then the bind pose is at the right scale too, and that you're good. So from that skeleton, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna click on that button here, which is called a create uh, ragdolls. And uh, what I want to uh, set up is a kinematic ragdoll. So dynamic ragdoll is like a regular ragdoll where when you're gonna apply some gravity and simulation, the characters will fall. Uh, this is not what we want. Um, kinematic ragdoll means that uh, it will not be influenced by the gravity, but any other objects in the scene will be influenced by that <coughs> rigid body. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it. Usually when you create it, you end up with something like this. <coughs> and uh, the reason for that is because um, uh, physics is more appropriated set uh, when you are making some centimeters character size, so 100 times bigger. Uh, so you can uh, decide to uh, have a, a smaller uh, constraint, scaling. Okay, not sure why it's not scaling here, but you can just remove uh, scale. Wait a minute, is it maybe the opposite size? No, I think that slider doesn't just doesn't work. 
Fair enough. Uh, you can just uh, remove uh, those, and uh, now you can see that your character has been approximated with a couple of um, capsules and spheres here and there. So it's it's pretty okay in some situation. Uh, we can see that there is uh, some bones around the legs, some capsules here around uh, the tibia, the knee. Uh, capsules around the feet. It's it's actually pretty okay, and this is what's going to be used uh, by the skirt to make uh, the simulation. So let's uh, maybe unhide this for a moment and uh, run the sim. And uh, by the way, um, I've got some settings here. So let me go back to the default settings. Uh, what you will have on your side. I changed that parameter here because I, I needed to fix it. Uh, and uh, also, let's check why I'm having ragdoll scaling, whatever. Never mind. So, if I press play, I'm getting a lot of weird results. So, obviously, um, first I get some collisions um, with um, some of the rigid bodies. Uh, so, we're gonna remove those. And uh, my other issue is, for some reason here, the mesh is stretching in a really weird way and it's kind of breaking uh, the clothes. Once again, the reason for that is because um, and that will you'll have that problem only if you have a meter sized character. Uh, the problem for that, the reason for that is because NVIDIA physics, once again, is um, by default, it's set for centimeters size character. So there are some uh, some some attributes which are set which are, don't have the right units. Especially you've got something when you go back into your clothes, you you've got something called collision thickness, and um, collision thickness is kind of the distance between the rigid body and your clothes uh, that you're gonna allow. And the free means free grid units. So here we're going to take every single capsules and sphere. We're going to add a radius around it of free grid units. And we're going to say this is the collider. Um, that parameter is here to help uh, making sure that you're not going to collide with your geometry when your rigid bodies are really close to that geometry. So here you really want to push this down to uh, some more regular units, 0 0.1 even, maybe 0, 0 0.5. So that really depends on the kind of size uh, your character is in. And as soon as you do this, now you've got something which is better. It's following my capsules, there's still some collision, this is why we've got all those shears there, but uh, when uh, uh, <laughs> when the leg moves, it moves, when the character moves, it moves. Um, I'm kind of puzzled of why we've got uh, those constraints being set up. Let's see. Okay, not sure why, but uh, they're probably here somewhere, and we can probably remove uh, the display of those guys. Anyway, um, so okay, let's go back and fix those shapes. So first thing that we want to do is we want to optimize that rig. Uh, there are plenty of bones here, especially the ends. We're not going to need them uh, for our current setup. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go within uh, our setup here and uh, we're going to remove anything we don't need. So I'm going to kind of select everything except uh, the left up leg and um, the right up leg. And I'm going to remove those. Great, let's hide the skirt for a moment. And uh, this is what I end up with. So I end up with those uh, capsules, which are pretty nicely oriented. Uh, the size is uh, pretty okay, but we may want to override this. So just a quick word regarding uh, the different nodes which have been created. As soon as you create a ragdolls, you get that uh, icon here. And uh, if you uh, go next to your skeleton, next to your uh, hips bone, or your parent bone, you've got a node called NX Ragnall. So this is where I selected uh, all my bones. And every time you kept um, one of those rigid bodies, uh, right under their bone correspondence, you get an NX rigid body uh, correspondence. This is where you're gonna be uh, able to provide uh, what's the restitution, what's the fraction of that specific rigid body. And also its density. This the density is going to be used mostly if you uh, make it a dynamic ragdoll, which we're going to fall. Uh, but uh, restitution and fraction, uh, sorry, yeah, restitution and fraction can be used uh, with the close as well. And uh, I've got the two of those. I can still expand it, and when I expand, I'll get the shape. And within the shape, uh, I'll be able to uh, override 
the actual shape of my rigid body. So uh, first is I can uncheck uh, the best fit and the best fit will allow me to change those attributes. I can also say, okay, I want to use a sphere, a box, um, a convex L. Uh, you really want to try sticking with uh, the first three ones uh, because they are the one with which, with which you can collide uh, more easily and more efficiently. So I'm going to go back with the capsules and uh, probably what I want to do is turn off a bit the radius of it. Okay, and I can uh, even um, orient, translate and change it the way I want to. So I'm probably going to uh, align it more with my leg and um, put it above something like this and probably reduce 0, 0, 8, probably reduce it a bit more. Let's go into wireframe to see what's going on here. Okay, that's not so bad. Maybe we want it to be longer, uh, maybe a bit longer, 28. Okay, so this is going to be my legs and uh, so 0, 0, 8 and um, 28. Let's go back to the other part now and let's set up the same way, 0, 0, 8. Oh, and let's remove the best fit and 0 0.28 and 0 0.08. Okay, great. There's, yeah, as you have seen, there are some refresh issues. So do not hesitate to type the value multiple times if you do not see anything within the viewports being updated. So um, the idea is really like to have a rough uh, approximation of your character. We want to make sure that it kind of go around it. Uh, you also have control on something called in flash inflation. So uh, it's more or less the same parameter than the one uh, we've been uh, using uh, and changing in the close. It's also a distance around your rigid body that you want to take into account. So, okay, that's uh, not so bad, I'd say. Let's go back to our first frame. Let's go back to our completely view. Let's bring back that skirt. We'll have some collisions here that we probably have to fix by uh, changing the, the cylinder position. Something like this. Maybe we'll have to orient, reorient that, that mesh also. Well, it's, it's, it's not much anyway. Great. And uh, if we run the same now, we'll have now the close going through and uh, following my system. And uh, as soon as it moves, the leg, it adapts. That looks awesome, actually. Great. Um, this is the first time I'm doing this setup while I'm recording, so I'm pretty glad it's it's working <laughs> right away. Um, so, okay, that's excellent. Um, how we uh, bring this uh, through Golem? So what we're gonna do is, as always, we're gonna select that close system, go into export selection and uh, uh, just a small addition to the rest, so we want to export a physics asset and we also want to include the collision rate. So really make sure that this checkbox here is going to be uh, enabled because this is where we uh, would like to uh, uh, keep into account those capsules we'll just set. We want to keep the centimeters unit, output unit to centimeters as well, and I'm going to override that skirt woman. Great. So um, now let's bring my crowd. So let's uh, close this down, go into my crowd field, enable it. Uh, let's check what are the different behaviors and sets. So first, I just want to check that my skirt looks proper. So let's run it and uh, looks good. Now we'll have a, a skirt animation and let's remove that wireframe display. Okay, great. And uh, as soon as we apply a motion, hopefully, Great, and it's following, and as soon as the character stop, it goes through. Let's uh, run that motion for maybe a bit longer. 75 frames. Great. So uh, within the viewport, we have some uh, you know slight difference. We may see some uh, collisions here and there, or some interpenetration of the meshes. Uh, Mm, uh, especially on the tight here. That's uh, mostly because the GPU display is not as accurate as uh, the rendering. When you're going to render, it will be uh, it will be proper and it will be fine. 
And uh, while we're here, let's uh, maybe check uh, some of the attributes you can tweak when you have some clothes which have uh, which are going to be adapted to some motion and uh, have some collision. So if you go back into your uh, clothing node, uh, so we've been playing with the collision thickness. We've seen the effects of this one already. Um, the more you increase it and the more uh, distance they're going to be into your colliding objects and your skirts. You also have something which is called a motion adaptation, uh, which is here. Motion adaptation kind of helps the clothes adapt to aggressive motions. So, um, you know, if you've got some um, motion which is like changing velocities all the time, uh, and um, turning around and uh, is really stressing for the clothes. Uh, you can probably uh, like increase that value to make it more to make your clothes more adaptable to your motion. So if you just have like a running character or walking character, usually you can stick uh, with this here. You've got also a safe collision. And that checkbox uh, tr uh, enables safe collisions with the clothes itself and determine um, the size radius to use for safe collision. So if you got at some point your clothes which is kind of colliding with itself, um, you can uh, enable this to avoid it. And once again, make sure that uh, you provide a corresponding unit here to avoid um, your clothes exploding all the, all the way. Uh, because here it's a unit, so free is going to correspond to free grid units. Um, you also want to maybe uh, change the stiffness of uh, your self collision. So this is just to help uh, avoiding the self collision. So let's disable this for uh, a moment. Uh, there are more advanced parameters. Once again, I invite you to check uh, the documentation regarding this. Um, the rest is kind of, you know, uh, yeah, advanced and we're not going to use that. Slow start is uh, something I kind of showed you already in the previous one. Is uh, If your motion like starts at frame 1 at a high velocity, uh, you don't want to have any interpolation going from the, the close at default state and the full close. So it's just to make sure that uh, you enable uh, uh, slow starts so your character reacts to this uh, properly. Hmm. And here we go. Um, so yeah, hope that makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, that that was because I was uh, kind of simulating the characters. Let's see. Yeah, okay. And uh, we're good. So yeah, um, that was the third video uh, of that uh, close simulation series. I uh, hope you liked it and you you learned a lot from it. Um, if you uh, what we try to cover, everything we figured will be uh, useful for crowds. Uh, but uh, if you reach a point where um, something you're looking for is not into this video, uh, we may do more videos to complete that series. We really want people to take advantage of that physics system. And especially because, well, it's real time. Uh, it has really high performances and it's fully adapted to the crowd pipeline, which means like if you export this, you'll get, uh, you know, your geometry being exported into the Golem cache and you can lay out this accordingly and just uh to make my uh, uh you know a quick examples of uh real time like you can have 400 characters here uh so it's going to be 400 times uh, the same character and uh, it still runs at a decent state so here you have 400 characters with complete clothes being simulated and what you can do is obviously um, while you iterate through, through your simulation you can just turn off the close behavior and uh you get skinning and you get real time uh, simulations. And from some characters which are really close to the camera, for example, you can uh, pick and decide a trigger for those guys. And uh, you can just enable the close uh, for those guys and uh, and uh, run it when you need it or run it uh, before you, you need to export your simulation. So uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, have a try with the physics system. It's really an awesome system. It's super fast. Have you seen, as you've seen into this uh, series of video, it's pretty easy to tackle as soon as uh, you understood the prerequisites and um, and um, you know the hover setup regarding the scales, the gravity, uh, the different units which are set here and there. Once you you uh, wrap your head around it, it's super super easy to come with and inject into your crowds. So hopefully that helps and uh, see you in the next video.